All right, so uh, let's get rolling here tonight. We won't uh, keep everybody too long. Um, what we're going to be doing is um, we're going to wrap uh, two strategies and an indicator uh, that's going to be coming out to you, uh, all members, as an update uh, to what we have already. Um, but this is a, a more of a user-friendly, uh, added more bells and whistles to add uh, more accuracy to the algorithm. And um, we're going to go over that tonight. So there's two separate uh, there's there's two separate uh, strategies that you'll be getting, and then also you'll be getting an indicator. Let's go over the indicator first. We all know the zone waves here. The zone waves. This is a zone wave. Um, obviously, green is uptrend, red is downtrend, and this is the entire session. I say this is yesterday. It's more. Had good volatility yesterday, up, down. Today was one directional, down. Um, but today, I want to show you how it works in a real big up, real big down. So uh, the bottom line is, is that you're going to get an indicator where it fires. Uh, all these FCR trades are going to fire with these arrows. So if, let's say you just want to run the indicator by itself. Uh, these qualified arrows will fire. Uh, this is actually I'm showing. Let me show you what I'm showing right now. I'm using a 30 Rinko on this, guys. So this is a 30 Rinko um, for all you. If you want to see what it is, uh, Uni Rinko 130 30. All right. Uh, if you're looking at these different strategies, um, anything from a 120 to 140 uh, depends if you want position trading, uh, scalping, or just looking for um, mild runs, or sh if you look for really short-term runs, you're looking for uh, you're looking for smaller Rico. So you know you can change this to whatever you desire. I really like the 30 a lot. I think that's a good medium uh, Rico to use, and um, so I'll show you the 30 tonight. But uh, you know you got uh, the the indicator will fire these uh, uh, arrows in the zones when you have a possible setup. Um, the 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 update is going to include a couple things that are new to this uh, as far as the zone package. So the zone package currently um, it will not fire all these arrows once qualified. The new package will uh, because it has first wave trades. First wave trades are basically when you get a trend change like this, we turn red to green. That fired that retracement and fired that arrow right there. Um, your strategy will pick this up also, um, which I'll show you how to do uh, on a first wave trade, and we'll pick that up on a first wave to the upside. Uh, it'll pick this first wave short to the downside. And so um, there, there's a few things that, um, let me get into this right away, and I'll show you the few uh, different things that I added to the software, and then I'll get into my Mo Momo strategy which a lot of you guys will really uh, enjoy because it's strictly looking for momentum in the market. It's a little different than this. It's a little bit more in-depth strategy because it has a little more bells and whistles. But I got toggle switches right here. I got the, a, a J wave. I may have wave one. Wave one is basically saying after a trend change, you're looking for that first retracement. If that's clicked on, it's only going to take those setups. So what you just saw there, I got wave one toggle switch on. Um, I got four ATRs. Uh, they're all the same right now, trailing. You can keep one really tight in your first initial run to your first targets, and they can loosen it up. Is how you want to do it, and I'll show you that in conference calls coming up, how you want to do that. Uh, I got break even plus one if you want that in there, and then I got the tweezer trades. The tweezer trade, two trades are going to happen with this. You're going to get a really shallow retracement, which is a tweezer. Tweezers are uh, where uh, the um, open and close are equal back to back. So you're getting um, a basically a doji, back to back dojis, whether it be two, three, four, what have you, in an indecision in price. And it's a pause in the market for continuation. Um, I added also, if this is checked, uh, it will go with uh, zone trend. It will look for very shallow retracements, which I'll show you what that means. So if this is checked, you're strictly looking for momentum with zone trend. If this is unchecked, it's going to look for FZR trades and MOMO trades. It doesn't have to have speed in the market. 
if you check this, you're really taking out a lot of the trades right away, and you're cherry picking trades. The algo is going to cherry pick the trades because what it's doing is it's strictly looking for momentum with zone trend. If zone is red, it's looking for short pauses in the market, a short uh, small retracements, which I'll show you on this algo that you're going to be getting in a second. I'll show you that uh, in a, uh, my other strategy that you guys are going to be getting is that um, if that's checked, you're strictly looking for momentum. Momentum. If that's unchecked, we're looking for uh, all FZR trades and so on. If this is unchecked also and you just want wave one trades, what it will do is it will take a wave one trades after a trend change and strictly take that wave one. So let's say you're trading off of a 20 Renko or a 13 Renko. What you can do, that wave one is typically a vertical move. You can keep this real tight. If you wanted to scalp the market on a first wave on, let's say, a 20, you can put 20 and 21 here, keep it tight, uh, and put these all 21s if you wanted to, and that trailing will, will hold price all the way up uh, or down until it stops out. Uh, the, the four trails are designed uh, to get you less risk in the beginning of move. So if you're trading, let's say, you know, a 20 Renko, uh, you can put 21 as your initial trail until that first target's hit. And if it closes outside of a 21 before that first target's hit, it's going to close you out of all of your positions, all four contracts. And you don't have to do four contracts, by the way. If you come down here and change this, to order handling and change that to one contract or trade one, two, three, four, et cetera. And you can do that also. But um, the tweezer is real nice is that because if you put the tweezer and I also added an uh, oscillator in there where it's not going to take every swing. It's only going to take uh, when the momentum is coming hard with the overall zone trend. A lot of you are going to like this toggle switch with this because the accuracy goes way up only because you're not trading a lot, but what you're doing is you're getting pauses in the market, short-term pauses. It's not just a tweezer trade. I got a filter in there to filter it out to look for short-term pauses in the market. Secondly, your break-even plus one trades, you don't even want to use this if, you're, if your first target is not ahead of your Rinko size you're using. So if you're using a larger Rinko, I always say this, larger Rinko, you're taking on more risk, so you need a larger reward. So you don't want to trade off of a 30 Renko and then have a four tick stop. I mean a four tick target, right? So you, you got to you got to have uh, if you're doing a break even plus one. The rule of thumb for me is when I'm doing this on a break even plus one. If I'm trading a 30 Renko, then I'll go 35 as my break even on my first target. So that tells me if I get my first target out. <clears throat> that Rico bar, if it retraces all the way back up, then it's going to stop me out break even plus one. Because if you have less than 30 on your first target on, let's say, a 30 Rico, there's no use using your break even plus one because you're not letting it breathe enough on Rico bars and go all the way to that high and, and stop you out break even every single time. So essentially, if you have a target one that is 30, 25, 20, 15, 12, it's going to hit that and it's going to stop you out immediately because you're trading off a larger Renko. So the rule of thumb that you're going to find out is if you're trading larger Renko sizes, you want that break even, you want that first target, you know, five, uh, you know, five ticks ahead of your break even of your first target. So if your first target is, you know, like I said, 35, right, then you want your, if you're trading off a 30 Renko, then you want your target one to be 35, five ticks ahead of your Rinko size. If I'm trading a 20 Rinko, then I want my, I can use break even if I'm using a 25 tick first target. If I'm trading a, let's say 25 Rinko, then I want 30 as my first target, right? Because you want that first target to hit and then go break even plus one. If you don't, you're never going to have a runner. You know, this system is designed for runners. That's where this really, really works well. And I'll show you. It's because of the capability of these four ATRs. It reduces your risk and the runners. Not only that, is it's cherry picking trades such as the tweeds, especially the next strategy that I show you, the momentum strategy. You'll see that exactly what I'm talking about. It uh, works out quite well. So uh, as far as that goes, that uh, we're going to go over these. And once you get this, 
um, how you can use this. I'm going to show you how you can use these, but that's essentially, you'll use this quite a bit, the tweezer and shallow retracement level, because what it does, like I said, is it cherry picks these setups. Um, because when I come over here to this strategy, then you're going to be getting, my feeling is it's going to be one of your favorite strategies because it strictly looks for momentum, and that's it. Uh, this comes in, and it's strictly only looking for momentum in the market when you have Momo setups. Now, what I've done with this strategy is a little bit different um, than, let me get this one turned back on, is this, uh, the zone, a little bit different than the zone because I got this 30 days back, it's calculating. So, a little bit different than the zone because you don't need to have trend trades. You don't need to have trend trades and you don't need, it can be counter trades or with trend with this other strategy because you're only looking for strictly momentum in the market. This strat saying, okay, I only want to trade vertical markets. So when I come into this strat, and I'll show you how these trades look alike, when I trade a, a strategy like this, then this is the same Rinko bar, same exact one, right? But I have it where it's strictly looking for momentum setups. It's not just looking for tweezer trades, though, because they don't come up very much. It's going to look for the retracement, shallow retracements of the markets, or you can even do deeper retracements. So what I did with this is really neat, is if you come in here and you look at the parameters, it's a lot, it's a more streamlined, right? Because I got everything built into the code. So you see retracement strength. So what retrace, retracement strength says, the best retracement strength you're going to get is a zero. What a zero says is that I only want to enter the market when it has serious momentum. I want to trade only vertical markets. If you go into retracement strength of zero, you're pretty much trading extreme MOMOs. You'll get some that are not extreme, but the majority are extreme MOMOs on any Renko bar that you trade. I don't care if you trade 13, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Whatever you trade is strictly looking for momentum trading. This strategy, I have it called JTrader, but Gerald will rename it, I assume, SimTrader. He'll, he'll have his own spin on the name that he wants to call it for us, but um, this is, your retracement strength can be changed. So let's say I just want to look for the best possible momentum setups with the most accuracy, meaning, meaning, meaning what I want to do is I want to look for, I don't want to trade a lot of trades. I just want to look for when momentum is going vertical in the market. You want to keep it at zero, all right? A single strength says, I want to make sure I don't, now zero, there's nothing less than zero, but if a single strength says, hey, then I'm not going to trade anything but zero, meaning I just want very uh, pauses in the market. If I put it to one and I have single strength on, it's saying I'm, I'm only looking for that type of shallow retracement. If I have this unchecked and I put one, it's going to do one and below. So I'll show you what type of retracements I'm talking about. Let's say, so if you're in one, and you click one, and now it's going to look for anything one and below on a retracement strength. So now what it's going to do, it's going to give you additional setups. And those additional setups are going to be based upon the swing when a momentum happens. So you can see down here with my arrows on these momentum trades, all right, it's an extreme one and zero, still an extreme setup, but right at below 20. So if this trade did not take it right here, my HR was still not trailing, this would have got you short here. That is a one, a zero wouldn't have got this, but a one retracement would have because it's a very shallow retracement. So you would have got short here if this never got you short. So some of you will want these retracements here and here, right? Because you're not going for a thousand tick uh, runner. Some of you guys won't want to do that. Um, I like initially getting the initial targets off and let it run as much as possible. Uh, but what it does, it allows you to get more swings in the trade. But once you get above one, you're telling the strategy that I can look for deeper MOMO setups. So as I increase the strength, 
I'm going to let the Momo be a weak a weaker Momo, meaning there's not a there's not ex an extreme push. So as I go up, and let's say I go up to eight, um, now I'm looking for all kinds of retracement trades. I'm looking for deep retracements. I'm looking for shallow retracements. It will take it eight or under, not unless you type uh, hit single strength. So what I'm doing now is I'm telling the strategy, let's take more trades. Now it just got this one to the upside, right? Because it missed this one before, because this was an extreme pause in the market. And it got this one. Now remember, I got a 35 tick first target. This one still went as high as what, 34 and a quarter? from 28 and a quarter. So that's six S&P points, that's 25 ticks is still made. I got my first target out to 35. You can adjust your targets how you want it. But you can see that hit, hit, uh, that hit 24 ticks on the first run. But what it will do is, if you don't hit your targets, it's gonna, wherever you put that ATR at, it's gonna sell all your contracts, so we don't wanna, uh, we don't wanna take a position you know, and run this to be a big loss to the other side. And another thing you can do is, let's say you do this. Let's say you just want to do, and you get in here at uh, 28 and a quarter, and it got as high as, what, 34 and a quarter, and that's six S&P points, that's 24 ticks. Let's say you want to front load this thing and say, uh, I want my first target to be 20, 20, 20, and my last target to be 1,000 ticks. Then you got 20, 20, 20, your first target's off, and then, you know, your last runner got stopped out. So um, you can do it that way, and it will affect your your uh, um, it will affect your overall performance. So you can play with it how you want to play with it. I I like just playing with this. The more I, I I'm, I'm when I put this together, the I'm really enjoying the momentum strategy a lot because it means the market has a possible chance to go major vertical move. I mean, this is 17 down to 88 potential. You know that that is a big move. That's 29 points on the S&P. You know that's a that's a, that's a big move. You know this one was 90 and a quarter all the way up to 14. We're talking 24 points on the S&P. So that's the style you can do. Or if you don't want to do that, another way you can trade this is is look for this to get in, let's say if, if you want to look for it to get in, and then you can add positions inside of a running ATR and look for momentum setups, and that could be your initial stop since running ATRs are typically when the market likes to move. So you can dictate you want less trades or more trades. You want less trades and less swings, and this is what helps your accuracy and performance. You bring that down, the lowest would be zero. But there's not a lot to the, uh, uh, for. it's very user-friendly now because I have everything built into the code of looking for the swing, right? Because it, it's either going to be a momentum trade or it's not. But now what I did is I added a swing indicator to it to say, hey, let's look at the strength of the swing for the Momo. And if I only want extreme pushes in the market, I'm going to keep that at zero. Right, so if I keep that at zero, if you look at these trades that's happened the last 30 days or whatever I have this on, is that look at the look at the setups that it occurs. These are vertical moves. These are not sideways move movement. We're talking is directional trading. I mean, we're looking pause, directional move. You know, pause, directional move, break even plus one hit, directional move. I mean, these are 35 down to 15. These are directional moves in the market. Directional move, that's a huge directional move, 56 down to 12. You know, that's almost 50 points. Right there, big directional move. So, so see, they're not taking long to take off. I think a lot of you guys will like this strategy because of that, because it, it doesn't get involved in this. And here's the thing about this trading this stuff is that it doesn't get involved in a lot of chop, 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 chop. Where if you get FZR trades, you get involved in this, right? You're going to get a lot of chop, chop, chop. You're going to have a zone that goes up, chop up, zone down, chop, 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 chop. Where this zone, if it goes vertical, it's a pause in the market and let's get rolling to the upside or downside. And I think a lot of you will appreciate that because, you know, these are big moves. So 
the other thing is this, is that you can see, since I have a zero, what's happening here? You, you're looking for, for small pause in the market. That's a small pause. That's an extreme OMO. And this is a 30 Rinko, right? Small, small right there, boom, right? As you increase the size and you increase your swing to larger, so now if you increase your swing to larger, it's going to look for something like this because of this Momo right here. So then if I increase my swing to look for Momos that are not pausing very little, they, they have a more of a, you know, let's say we put in a five relative strength, a, a swing. You know, what you can do is you can see what swings that work for you the best. Do you want only major momentum or do you want to come in here and say, okay, this is a qualified Momo, but is this Momo better than this Momo? No. The reason being is this has a lot of strength built into it. It's an extreme Momo, right? Where this one is just a regular Momo. So my, my whole thing is anything below 62, 62 here, a five, five to six strength is around 62% retracement. And if I look here and I look at these retracements on these swings, you know, you're looking at, you're primarily looking for a 62%, you know, retracement. If I could take this and go there, that's 62 to 76% right there. If I move that over to this swing, pretty much it's going to be a 62, 76% retracement is right at 62% right there at that high, right? That's why that caught that because. As a five is typically around 62%. But if I lower my retracement strength, so if I have it down to zero, right? If I have this thing to zero or one, then I'm telling you, so when I see a retracement like this happen, if I see a retracement that happens with that small pause in the market. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get out of the way. It's easier to see it this way. So if, if I use a one or a z, a, this would be zero, this would be one or two. This is a, a five zone. I mean a five retracement strength. So if you only want to take these, then keep your relative swing uh, swing to one or less or two or less. Okay. If you want to open up the swing to take more momos and take all the momos, if you want to take all the momos, open up to eight, right? You're going to get more stops, though. But what it does, it opens it up more. You can open the strat up, but you're going to get more stops. But it's opening up more swings in the system. So as you go through, you know, it's going to open up more swings to catch these swings like this. And here's the thing about this, how performance works on this, okay? When you open it up to a lot more swings, you're going to get more stops. That's a small, that's a swing. If you put it to less swings, right, and you're looking for less swings in the market, then less stops. So if I if I want to ignore price action right there like that, and I don't want to get in those deeper swings, you just lower your strength. Now, if I lower the strength to one, I'm looking for small pauses in the market, and that's going to take that swing out completely. Because now I'm looking for small pauses for continuations. Right? Now I just took it out. You see that loser that it was on a larger swing? Because you're not taking deeper retracements. So you can fit this to how your style of trading, in other words. All right, let's go over performance. So if I, a lot of traders 
think that if you have 100% accuracy on a strat, but your reward to risk is, let's say, a one-to-one, -one, would you be more profitable that way or be more profitable of having a 60% strat, right, with a three-to-one reward to risk? Well, the three-to-one reward to risk is going to outmatch uh, the other one, right? Because what you're doing is, is your reward is a lot bigger than the overall risk, right? So you have to understand that too when you're, when you're doing algo trading is that you want to put yourself in a position to get runners. This is the key to the strat are the runners. For me, you don't want to be trading this thing all day long, right? In and out, in and out, in and out. That's what the beautiful thing about this momentum strat is. It's getting you in a position with only momentum comes in. Momentum comes in. If I trade off of a smaller Rinko, it's smaller reward with higher stops. If I trade a higher Rinko, you're going to get a larger reward with larger stops. So you got to find what is comfortable to your reward to risk strategy. Everybody's risk tolerance is different. So to me, I, I think 30 is a really good, I'm going to send this out to you with this loaded up because I, I, I really like the, how, how it works on Mo, uh, Momo trading. And we'll have the oscillator down here below. You're going to know when this thing fires, right? You'll know when it fires on the shallow and so on. So that's something that, you can do. Now, you do have a, a trend filter in here. It's only a moving average trend filter. But you do have a trend filter you can put, and it'll only take trades in the direction of that, whatever MAs you put in, or what have you. But the key for you is this. Two things. Retracement strength, the lower the retracement strength, down to zero is the best, are small pause in the market for vertical markets. That's key. Okay? And then the other thing is, is that uh, um, the other thing is that we want to, um, if that is off, it's going to take counter and with trend. But I'm finding is, is that when you click this, it's sometimes going to be against overall trend, but it's going to be very brisk to the upside or brisk to the downside. So I like this actually off. I like the trend filter off on the momentum setups because momentum goes either way. Sometimes the counter moves are just as large as the trend moves. So I like that off. All right. And like I said, you don't have to have these targets. The one thing if you use break even, and here's the thing when you get this, and I appreciate you guys chatting in the room and talking how you're doing with it and the things you guys are using, all that stuff. Um, you will have four trails on this, um, on your version you're getting. You will have four trails to reduce risk. Um, so this is just one, but you will have four here. The other thing is, too, is I have a hard stop built into this thing, but you really don't even need the stop because your trail is, your tra if, if you have four trails, the stop's really irrelevant because it's going to sell all contracts if it violates a trail. So let's say I trade off of a 20 chart, a, a 20 Rinko, then you want to put that at 21 on the first ATR to trail really tight in case you don't get to your first targets. And you could still come out winning on the position or taking a real small loss, right? And then your other ATRs, if it does hit it, you can widen them up to, a, you know, 38, 54, and so on. So there's four ATRs here, but the stop on both algos, it's not really relevant since the trail is the key to this working well. The four trails are key. I mean, that's what makes this thing really work well. The other thing the key is, is this, the, the retracement strength that really took these Momo setups to another level. I mean, Momo setups by themselves were good, you know, especially when you use them with different market profile and stuff. But when I put the retracement strength in it, it really took it to another level because now we can control with the algo to only look at real high vertical markets or all trades that, you know, that we don't want to, that we want to get involved with or we don't want to get involved with. Okay, so that's something to, uh, to think about. So, like I said, you can adjust your vertical strength, and we'll go over this in the conference calls based upon these. You know, this is very shallow, 
If you put a one in there, that's going to get those. It's going to get all three of these. It's going to get all those, right, on a 30, because they're all extreme Lomos, and you're good to go. So then let's go back here to this. Then why do we have this? Now, I want to take a look at the similarities in this. So here, let's first go back to this one. And this is a large contract. A lot of you uh, guys and gals uh, like to trade the micros and stuff, and that's one-tenth of the big contract, which is fine. Let's go back to this real quick. I just want to show you something. So this is a first-wave trade, the trend change, first-wave trade, with a momentum setup built in. So this is momentum. I built another momentum. It's just not tweezer trades, but momentum setup. So what it'll do, it's only going to look for momentum with ATR trend. And then you can put your ATR trend where you want it. It's only going to look for momentum setups. It's not going to take any FZRs. But you can see right here, it's going to take this guy. If it wasn't already short, it will take this guy. It will take this guy short. It won't take any FZRs. It won't get into any chop trades like this because there's no momentum. That's why this, this with the new update really works well with this. So when you get this, this is momentum. Caught that big momentum and we got long there also if it wasn't long. That's a shallow retracement. You can see the difference. It doesn't get involved in chop now with this update. All right, it looks for vertical momentum. So if I were to look at the strats then, and I were to compare the strats beside each other, right, and I'm looking at both of them, when they're two different strats, they're really relative, they're very similar. They're very similar because what happens is, is you get, pretty much the same momentum setups. The only difference between this strat and the other strat is that this has to be with ATR, I mean with the zone trend. It's got to be a zone trend on vertical moves. That I don't have it in, but it takes along there. Here's a stop. The stops are based upon the ATR, trailing ATR. But you can see it only looks for this momentum kick when that tweezer is selected. All right, it's only looking for that momentum kick. Now, here's the thing about it. You can widen this. So let's say you want to widen your ATR. And you're like, man, this is a good momentum and my ATR is too tight. What you can do is you can come in here and widen your ATR if you're getting, if you're getting stop, small stop outs like this. So I'm getting small stop outs like this. Then I'm telling myself, well, Let's go to the first target. I can I can go at a, a, a less. Let's say I want the first target at I can do 31 here, and then let's go right to 63. I I mean go all the way out if you want. I go 72. I don't want to go past 72 to 75. But what that's telling you is you take your hard initial risk in the beginning of the infancy of the trade. Let's take the hit that first wave so now when I click it your first oh, I gotta adjust my first target sorry you adjust your first target so say you want to take 15 out there then it's going to go right to after the first targets hit it's going to go right to the second ATR Take the break even plus one off because remember, break even plus one is irrelevant if it's less than where the Renko is. So we're going to widen it to 75 as my max. I wouldn't go higher than 75. I'm just showing you what you can do for runners when you when you trade these different markets. Oops, I'm sorry, I got my stop. That's where the hard stop comes in. Make sure your hard stop is. So if you're using the ATR as your trail, right, the hard stops are relevant. And here's another thing when you do this so you guys don't get confused. 
always put your hard stop out for out further. I always put it further than my running my last running ATR. But my point is, is that these contracts are not going to sell. This is your new stop. So this is your initial stop in the beginning of the infancy of the trade. Because you're trying to get the first 15 ticks off. Right? First 15 ticks off or whatever. Or first 35 ticks off. Uh, whatever but then then your other trails will kick in so you can do it that way also that's another way you can do it is you can adjust your trail according to how you want to hold it you can do it something like this where you're getting these big brisk moves to the upside downside with the trail or you can tighten it up I mean if you want to tighten your trail up and you don't want it to be that wide and this is a 30 Rinko, use a 31 trail. It's gonna it's gonna trail price tight. But don't look for runners on this. Just look for hitting your first target one, two, three, four. If your targets are in based upon this move to the upside downside. So now look what happens. It changes the dynamics a little bit. That's too tight because I got a little tighter swing. So see, I'm getting too tight on these small swings. 31 is too tight. So you can see right away, because what I did is I put slippage in this pretty much already. So if I go 33 trail, even on shallow retracements, it should hold. Three above the, two or three above your Rinko should hold it. And you should see this small retracement and this retracement um, get a trail. There's your trail all the way up. But then what you can do then is you can have Momo trades that, are not lagging. I mean, this is a 28 to 61 move. So you can do that also. Let's say you don't want to have it out to 1,000 ticks. Then you can have these profit targets here where you get 28, you scale, scale, you can scale here and let the last runner run if you want to do that also. That also is going to affect how you want to do it. So we'll go over all this stuff, guys. Uh, those are the two you're going to get. Um, I'm also doing a fair value gap. Um, I went over it this morning. It called the high in the zone. We had a big zone short in the uh, E yesterday, and I was teaching traders how to look for liquidity when a zone is broke inside or outside. That's why FZR zone trades work. I have an FVG, which is a fair value gap indicator. I'm going to be getting out to you guys. That actually lets me know where um, the market should retrace and stop at to cherry pick your FZR trades. Um, we're going to be putting that into the algo also. Not on this update, but the next update. We'll have a fair value gap. If you want to look at it, look up an FVG. Um, an FVG, it's a fair value gap. Very, very well. Um, we caught the, uh, here this morning, it caught the swing. This fair value cap caught the swing high. Uh, it broke here. Where was it? There's my fair value gap right here. So when this is happening down here, we broke it. This was right at my zone. This is an FZR short right in my zone. And this is a fair value gap. I teach you how to do it right at 930. There's manipulation in the market from 930 to 940. I teach you how to look for fair value gaps in the market. Because what happens, there's an inefficiency in price or there's a market imbalance from this big bar that, go, that went down. There's a big inefficiency in price, and then it spits out this level for you going forward. That is where you want to sell FZR trades. I'm going to show you how to cherry pick FZR trades with this indicator. It's called a fair value gap indicator. Look it up on the internet. It's called an FVG. That is where we're looking for inefficiencies in price or order imbalances like our market profile levels. You get outside of HV and LVA. That's a balanced and imbalance. And we all know our Momo trades work really good outside of balanced markets. And that's another thing. If you break your market profile, what I'm doing on the next update, you guys will already have this in your hands. I'm using this with uh, the fair value gap indicator will be included in this. And then also the market profile will be included into this strategy. So not only will it look for specific Momo swing trades, it's got to be with the fair value gap, and it's got to be with the market profile push as a toggle switch. 
those will be toggle switches that I'm adding. Um, we're going to get this out to you first. Um, Gerald's going to have this uh, latest by Monday, this weekend. Um, he's going to wrap this thing, and we're going to get this out to you. We are good to go to send this out. Uh, there's no need to do any further testing on the Momo. Either it's a Momo trade or it's not. That's it. We don't need to go back 30 years, 50 years, all that BS on a Momo setup. It's either a momentum setup or it's not, period. You know, so we don't need that stuff because it's already shows we know when momentum comes in the market. We know when that happens. And this oscillator with uh, my with the built-in retracement indicator um, lets us capture when momentum is coming in these markets and so on. Um, so this is the two strats you're going to be getting. And like I said, um, what we'll do is this going forward, you get this strat also. And I'll show you, this is the FVG right here, this high. So I'm going to show you how we're going to use this indicator that you guys are going to be getting. What it does, it shows order imbalances in the market on a one-minute chart, a five-minute chart, or a 15-minute chart. You can go as high as 60 if you want for big position trades. But I went through this with traders this morning, and I said we have a possibly they're going to try to take liquidity out of the market. Um, at 9.30, what happens if we were in a hard downtrend right here with my indicator? My algorithm was in a hard downtrend already. We're in a downtrend, 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 downtrend. And I said right at 9.30, what they like to do is they like to go the opposite of trend to create a manipulation in the market, these algorithms. So what to do, there's price manipulation, and the manipulation happened right here at 9.30. And I said, look for the counter move back up into the zone. I said, we want to break this high because the buy stops will be above this high. I said, if we break this high, we're going to have an in inefficiency in the market, and they're going to take liquidity right there. And I circled it right there. I said, if it breaks back through here, this market could tank. And sure enough, I was right. There was my FVG. It showed uh, an inf insufficiency in uh, order flow. It showed an imbalance in order flow on the one minute chart. It stopped right within what you guys were in here live today when I was showing you this. is like within one tick, I think it was. It stopped right at my FVG, my fear of uh, that uh, the in inefficiency. It broke through here. They took all the buy stops out. They broke it back below. So I'm actually going to add this to our FZR trades too. So our FZR trades, you're going to have this indicator. You're going to know which FZR trades are possibly your largest possible runners. Because if it's a fair value gap in the market, this is fair value gap, FVG, and I walked this before this happened live today. Members were in the room. They saw this. So that's possibly a fair value gap because if we break through this high, the buy stops can get taken out. And this happens between 9.30 and 9.40 on a daily basis. You look for a trade from 9.40 to 9.50 in the day every morning on my FZR trades because there's an order, order imbalance. So what happens is it's always the opposite direction. If you're in a downtrend, you're looking for price to go up, counter trend trade, get into the zone, break the previous high, trying to get liquidity in the market, a fair value gap it's called, and then we're looking for a continuation to the downside. This indicator will help determine where the fair value gap is. It should come right down to the low. It actually gave the target down here. We had a fair value gap buy um, right here that exploded up off of this level, but it will show you what FZRs. So what I'm going to do is I, I've already taken the Momos to another level. I'm going to take the FZR trades in our level by looking at fair value gaps in the market by the order in, in, in efficiency from 9.30 to 9.40. They like to counter trend trade the market that first 10 minutes. Start watching for FZR trades from 9.40 to 9.50. Go back in your trade blotter for the entire month and look at your FZR trades from that time frame. Then you're going to look at these macro point of views also. These algorithms like every hour on the hour. 10 to the hour to 10 after the hour, 10 to 10 to 10 after 10, 10 to 11 to 10 after 11, 10 to 12 to 10 after 
12, 10 to 1 to 10 after 1, 10 to 2 to 10 after 2, and 3 and so on, and then you got that big push at the end. When you see FZR trades that come into the zone, in, in those time zones, time and price match up, and this is time and price over here. We had an order insufficiency right here where we had an order imbalance, and I said this is another reversal, looking for reversal. They took out the high. They went right to my zone, and it went right exactly to where? Right exactly up to here at the level again. It went into it again for, it was actually here this morning. There was a level here on my five-minute chart that showed an order right there that showed that there was an imbalance in orders. And all an FG is, a fair value gap, it says this. The buyers and sellers are not matching. You have a hard push to one side and you're looking for a possible rebound to that uh, fair value gap to, to get the balance, imbalance back to balance. So I'm going to teach and educate you guys how you can look for these FVGs, fair value gaps, so it can go from an insufficient market to a sufficient market, meaning a, a, an imbalanced market like this, back into a balanced market, taking these highs, bringing in liquidity. All right, so we'll do that also um, as far as... Uh, in the, in, the, in the trading room. All right, so those are the two strategies you're getting. You get the indicator with this. The indicator is going to have all these FCR arrows that fire. These will all fire for you. All these will fire. And then um, that's what we'll be doing. The next update will be getting about three months down the road. Um, I'm adding the fair value gap in with market profile, and there's going to be a toggle switch. So it's going to show this. If LVA is here, then... Right when it gets below low value area, I'm in a, I went from a balanced market, below is an imbalanced market, then it's going to start taking MOMO trades in that direction, FCR trades in that direction, because you're in an imbalanced market. Then what I'm going to do also on the same update, I'm going to have the uh, fair value gap added to this algorithm. The fair value gap, what it will do, it will show which FCRs are in a fair value gap also. All right, so that's something to look forward to also. I'm going to show you how you can cherry pick which FCRs should be the um, one of the top reversals in the market. Okay, so that's it, guys. We're going to, I'm going to throw this over to Gerald. Uh, latest by Monday, uh, like I said, and um, we'll get him to start wrapping this. We're going to get out to all you members, and then we're going to start having weekly conference calls. Uh, we probably won't have one next week, but the, you guys will all have it by then. Uh, as soon as you get in your hands, we're going to start having weekly conference calls, and we're going to dive right into this thing. All right?